You know, it's not even Christmas yet, but we've decided to cruise on down Santa Claus Lane. That's a thing, right? Uh, it's a song. I think so. But anyway, uh, we don't know shit about Christmas, really, no. because we've never celebrated it. Yeah, that's weird. But uh, we do celebrate it vicariously through movies. Okay. So basically, our knowledge of Christmas is restricted it's just to movies. Yeah, it's restricted to stereotypes and tropes, and the but hate the, of uh, Christmas carols. Yeah, that's true. But uh, I think uh, America as a whole has kind of accepted, you know, certain things about Christmas and, and made them part of the fabric of what it means, uh, what the Christmas spirit means. I okay, guess. I don't know where this is going, but okay. I mean, think about it. You know, Home Alone, oh, okay. Christmas Story. Film-wise, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, they, yeah. They've kind of accepted that this is what Christmas is all about or is supposed to feel like or what have you. You know, right. so in that spirit... I'll bite. In that spirit of Christmas, if you will, we decided to uh, see Krampus, which was released a few years ago, but uh, has cut, become like a cult uh, hit. Actually, it was it was pretty successful at the box office, mm -hmm. so it's beyond a cult hit, I guess. But uh, this was your first time seeing This was my second time seeing it. So I just wanted to... I wanted to start our tour down memory lane... By something that happened not not that it's long ago. Like the most recent thing. But uh, no, I just really felt you should see it because you should see it before Gremlins in a way. Because I think this is like the new Gremlins. Now a lot of people are gonna rape me for saying that. Nah, I would agree. I but, like Gremlins, but yeah, I on. mean, it's just yeah. I mean, there's like a reluctance for people to accept something as a new classic. Yeah, you know, and that's I mean, there's there's nothing. We're not saying Gremlins there's sucks. No, there's nothing wrong with something that just came out. Yeah. Like, why does that have to be shot on? It, it's kind of a ridiculous notion, man. But but this is, I think, kind of the new Gremlins. If not, I mean, I think it's better, honestly, than than Gremlins. Uh, no hate on Gremlins. I love Gremlins, but uh, I like Gremlins way too much. Gremlins, Gremlins. Gremlins. Hey, Gremlins. But yeah, anyway, let's talk about this movie, man. Uh, the first time I saw it, I absolutely adored it. I was like, man, this is this is awesome. And it's kind of like, uh, it kind of takes into account all these Christmas tropes that we're familiar with. And it just sticks them all into one movie, into one big snowball, I guess. And uh, it works with that, you know. And it, it doesn't hold back from the wide spectrum of tropes. In fact... <coughs> The dysfunctional family Christmas is played up to yeah. quite a lot, but likewise is the, you know, kind of feel good spirit of Christmas notion underlying the whole thing. But also, it's still very distinctly a horror film. Yeah, and it's a comedy. You know, it's it's a, it's a, a hodgepodge of everything that kind of works pretty well. I think. Uh, what was your overall impression of the film? Yeah, I feel like it shouldn't work. It really, it, yeah, it really shouldn't. But it does work. But it does, yeah. There's a lot of like. Well, there's some comedic actors in this, which is kind of weird to see them in this role. I mean, I'm sure they've had other roles, but, uh, well, they have for sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's weird to see these actors in this this role. and In uh, the genre, really. And, yeah. yeah. And the, the, the fact that the movie is kind of played like an old school horror movie at time, at times. Like, there's a lot of, like, like it's structured like, a, like an old horror movie. Mm -hmm. Um... And yet, it has all these, like, things put into this gumbo soup. That's right, gumbo soup of film. Come on, you gotta bail me out here. I'm gonna... <laughs> I I'm went gonna... down the gumbo soup road. <laughs> I was just enjoying the, the plane crash that that entire sentence was. It was pretty good. Gumbo soup, though. No, but you're right. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff in here that, that shouldn't work. And uh, I'm, still, I'm, I'm still like to... a nice gumbo soup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to get over the gumbo soup. No, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's 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 really weird. It's kind of like Shaun of the Dead in, in terms of these elements kind of shouldn't mix or yeah. really shouldn't work, but they do, you know. Um, only we've got something completely different here. But um, it does that absolutely well. It appealed to me in a lot of ways. You know, yeah, there's a lot of funny stuff. But it's never blatantly a yeah, comedy. I was, yeah, I was about to say it's not like like a Sean where there's it like, like you could tell it's just a comedy, even though it does the horror really well. Uh, this is more just like a movie that has funny moments, yeah. but isn't necessarily a comedy horror movie. Right. It kind of reminded me of like the darker moment. I mean, not in terms of the way it 
felt, but in the way it was carried out. The darker moments of Ghostbusters, you know, where there's still kind of that yeah. heavy horror element, but there's definitely a lighter side to it. But uh, yeah, so let's talk about the flick as a whole. Um, Krampus, of course, is based on an old uh, Teutonic uh, tradition. You know, basically the evil Santa Claus that punishes uh, uh, bad kids or bad people in general, and they t- they take on that and they and they bring it into this traditional Christmas story, a la Gremlins. You know, basically a kid uh, is kind of disillusioned with the way Christmas is uh, is being represented. You know, very commercialized, very antagonistic in terms of these families, yeah. and then you know he kind of gets pissed off and nothing's going right and. His, his desire for this to, to just stop, to just end, calls forward this, this, this creature. And uh, antics ensue. And I think one of the best things about the movie is that it earns the final sequences, you know. Uh, there's a lot of things in horror movies, that uh, recent horror movies, where they think that just throwing stuff out at you constantly is what works. And sometimes it does. Yeah, which is what, what I was. Sometimes it does. What I was wanting to say that it's more it's more structured like an older horror yeah. movie, and that there's a lot of moments where it's just build up or, um, you know, the infamous, oh, we gotta go down this corridor, right. you know, build up moments, and, and yeah, and this, which makes the you know the the payoff more satisfying. Right. It uh, the stuff escalates. You know, the scenes escalate in intention and and action and stuff. Until we got kind of like this final, like orgiastic nightmare of bizarre yeah. Christmas imagery just coming at you, like, and by then you're just like, yes, this is what I want, you know. In fact, orgiastic is the way to go because this Orgi- builds up like a fine oh, gumbo soup, <laughs> like a fine gumbo soup, <laughs> gumbo soup. Yeah, yeah, man, it, it's really good. It really does that really well. Another thing that the film does incredibly well, I think, is it sets the rules of its universe pretty early on. And throughout, with dialogue, with you know, especially through the grandmother figure, yeah, and uh, you really just get a feeling for the <clears throat> for what the rules of this this particular universe are before they're explicitly stated. When the grandmother, you know, kind of has her flashback, you know what's up. You know where the restraint, you know where the limits and the borders are. Uh, so everything falls into place well, and uh, this ex- this concept extends, I think, to the dialogue that none of it is wasted. Everything. Either if it's not fitting the humor, it's fitting a purpose, you know. Uh, also, the characters none of them none of them are wasted, and they kind of fit into the idea of the, you know, the Christmas spirit, the family bonding. Everybody, despite their vast differences, contributes something that you know is a part of, uh, I guess, a part of their personality, you know. So we have two families, one mm. clearly a very liberal family, mm. and the other one very you know conservative. Yeah. And they fit into the, you know, they're, they're all cast with stereotypes, broad stereotypes. But the thing is here, we come to realize that these stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason. You know, they're kind of true. You know, a lot of people are like this. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we're a little bit of both or whatever. But in the end, all their differences are cast aside. And each one contributes something in terms of their strengths. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that that's a really kind of like a sweet message in the midst of all this horror yeah. because even as it happens they're dying and stuff you know yeah so that's pretty that's pretty unique man they, they, they really did something incredibly well with with utilizing these characters and the script uh so anyway let, let's talk about the actors though what did you think overall i thought everybody was good i like adam scott i've liked adam scott for a long time um that's why uh he actually started off <laughs> in, in hellraiser 4 but, oh, yeah, he did. But That's only right. recently, you know, he got big. Anyway, he's great. I really like him. I like. I think I liked everybody. I don't think I didn't like anyone. Um, obviously, the kids. I mean, some of them have smaller roles. The kids so were you, pretty great. Yeah, they were say. good. You know, they really. I'm just saying, like, you can't really like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. like this. The, I like the kid I mean, with the, the mouth open. The, <laughs> the standout kid, of course, is Max, your main yeah. character, and he he was really well cast. The kid is fantastic. He really gets across that feeling of you know. The disillusioned kid that just wants a good cohesive fucking family unit. Yeah. You you feel kind of, you you feel his pathos, I guess, and and uh, you know it's 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 brilliantly <clears throat> cast because he's really kind of like the central point. And another thing that's the central point is I think my favorite actor 
or actress in this case is I don't know her name, but she played the grandmother, mm. and uh, I mean that kind of like touched a, a particular chord with me because I had a, a, a relationship with my grandmother that kind of you know mirrored Max's. You know that there's that generational bond that it shouldn't exist, yeah. but it's there in the in this kid and his grandma, and they understand more than emotionally speaking than all the others do and it's they that are the key to the whole thing so that was pretty cool to me man she did a really good job and uh anyway yeah yeah you're across the board yeah. great acting i think they all have their own <clears throat> at least the the grown-ups have their own time to shine too and let's not forget the useless turd of a dog which <laughs> but uh yeah yeah cute, though. everybody was everybody was pretty damn great uh let's talk about the uh, the effects in this thing, which it was really a pleasant surprise to see physical effects. Nowadays, if horror fans can get physical effects, that's, I mean, that's just a, a big plus. You know, they're, they're becoming increasingly rare. Mm -hmm. And it's because they're costly and time consuming. So it's understandable, you know, when uh, computer effects are used. And, and some are used here, of course. You know, like there's yeah. gingerbread men that come into the mix. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a physical effect, a la Ginger Dead Man. Well, would not, not that work. bad. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, they're good. They're used sparsely. The CGI effects, uh, either as enhancements or, or know, I think or I'm pretty sure early on when he's jumping on the yeah, that yeah. was a CG, but it looked good. But it looked good, yeah. yeah. It, you know, but uh, mostly we see physical effects, and they're pretty fantastic, man. And they go in tune with the kind of malevolent glee of the of the film so we get some wild designs uh any particular favorites i like the well the gingerbread <clears throat> men were cute ginger yeah gingerbread men. it was good man. to see gingerbread men that weren't annoying they weren't like the ginger dead man gary Busey has lame ass mopos um but yeah they were cool i like those i like the uh the weird like sled horses oh yeah yeah those those were cool, cool. The Krampus looks cool. Krampus looked pretty. I, I like that they went with kind of a, a, the old man with a gaping maw yeah, look. Yeah, it's weird. Rather than the more traditional, you know, kind of goat-like guy. That, I, I mean, he had goat legs and, and no, no nuts. nuts. And, uh, you know, doodly, doodly, doodly. <laughs> and the <laughs> and horns. No one's going to get that. Anyway, um, yeah, I li I liked all of them. I think my favorite one was probably the, the Krampus because it was so weird. Um, even though I think that was the most obviously in effect. Because of the, how the face didn't really emote or anything. It looked cool though. So it worked. Um, but yeah, I thought they were all good. I had a... Uh, this go round, I kind of had like a uh, an increased love for the elves. They're, they're yeah, they're cool. Like a weird kind of like a Roman Bacchanalia look to them. You know, they're the, with the masks. Yeah, like, yeah and the weird masks. Weird reveling for no reason in the background, you know. Uh, yeah, there was something like really kind of eerie about them. And yet, of course... Keeping in spirit with the movie, kind of amusing. Mm -hmm. But uh, the toy effects were all awesome. You know, they're 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 just kind of the shit that makes you smile. You know, again, kind of like Gremlins, well, yeah, only like with more variety. Ordering on Goofy. Yeah, but it's you know well, well balanced. But it, yeah, but it fits in the movie, so it doesn't matter. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, action in this because there's enough action in this to, you know, kind of warrant a conversation about it. Uh, like you said previously, it kind of builds up. And uh, each set piece is a little bit more intense. And so we get kind of like this big old blowout at the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was... I thought this is where the humor worked its best. Not that it ever worked badly. It always worked... It was a fine-tuned in terms of humor. But I thought this is where the humor worked its best. Because we got kind of these characters in these dire situations. Just kind of being like these id versions of themselves. You know, screaming out lines that... You know, you'd expect them to scream out and, yeah. you know, kind of take glee in them. Uh, I was especially fond of the uh, gingerbread man attack. And then when the aunt just yeah, kind of becomes <laughs> yeah, this fucking gun-toting maniac. Like freaking Rambo-ass aunt. That was pretty cool, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, overall, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the action. Anything, anything particular stand out for you? And I think, like you said, the gingerbread man scene was pretty funny. And that's the one I heard uh, when it was when it came out that I heard everybody jizzing over, and that's for good reason because it was, it was good. Yeah. Uh, but really, like the last confrontation, I guess, or the last big blowout 
It's pretty freaking great. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It Man, I mean, I just can't wrap my mind around how awesome it is to, and how rare it is to see something like that. That You know, just you want. You've earned this 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 humongous set piece in the movie. And everybody, I think, watching it wants that. <clears throat> and uh, there could have been flaws in it. And you just don't care because yeah. you're seeing all this cool shit happen. And it works really well. Uh which brings me to this uh, um the movie despite getting a a pretty good message across ends in a very morbid tone yeah. despite that you know it gets its message across about christmas and you know the spirit of it incredibly well to where you kind of feel like upbeat but not really but not really yeah, yeah. It, it pulls the rug out from under you it, several times yeah it kind of it kind of like it's funny too because while it's putting its message across, it also kind of shits on all the all the like stereoty- stereotypical endings for those kind of yeah, movies. Yeah, it really does. Like completely, but it still has the same message. It's just in a different way while saying, "Screw that shit." We're yeah. doing our own thing. This is where I think it's still very distinctly a horror movie in terms of there really is no great <laughs> happy resolution. Yeah. But the message, the positive message, still comes across incredibly well. So uh, if you haven't seen it, go see it. And don't see the rest of this part because we're going to discuss the end. But yeah, like I said, it pulls out the the rug from under you several times. You know, we've established that the film itself establishes its rules of its universe quite well. And they talk about sacrifice and, uh, you know, giving from the heart. So we have the grandmother figure kind of decide, you know, I'm going to... I'm going to give my life up for my family, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, traditionally in a normal movie, that would be it. The grandmother stands up to her old ancient fear and saves her family. But of course, we know that she's not the one that called for Krampa. So her death basically is just a stalling. So there mm-hmm. we go. One rug pulled out from under us. And then we have Max. That one's still, that one's still like, okay, we've seen yeah, this Yeah, yeah, of course. And then we have Max do the same thing kind of mirroring the life of his grandmother as he has the entire movie and he basically decides you know i'd rather give up my and this is where you're like oh all right this is the yeah. this is this is good this is this i mean i would have been really happy with that oh look he saved his family by saying, this is good the message is solid and we still got a great horror movie but then and, and we really i mean i love the way they tease us you know where we, where we get krampus kind of looking at him like oh yeah. fuck and then, you know, he wipes away the tear and you're like, oh, oh wow. Well, here we go. We're going to rewind all this. It's going to be fine. And then he just starts laughing, you know, <laughs> with the level. Yeah, really. he's just like, they were and, like teasing him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, tropus, I call him. Yeah. I, it was fantastic, man. And he just drops him into this gaping <laughs> hell hole. Hell hole. And you're like, whoa. And then he wakes up, and you're like, oh, rug pulled out from under us yeah, again. Yeah, you're like, oh, it's just a dream. Yeah. We've seen that one before. But then, of course, I don't know if you noticed it. Uh, I noticed it my first go-around. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's, well, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty noticeable yeah. that, you know, there, there's kind of like that gauzy, yeah. you it's know, got film. The, it's got the va- – they vast up that lens. They vast up the lens, so, you know, we get that dreamlike quality. And here is – this was the real kicker to the gut because it becomes increasingly evident that – you know something is wrong with it you know he wakes up his family's alive everything's fine but you know as the clues come forward especially when when he opens his own present and he sees krampus's bell Mm -hmm. and you see their smiles melt away and then that knowing look in their face uh you know and the camera really fucking holds on that you're like oh man that's a damper right there with the you know the events from the movie playing an audio right. form so you're that. like so you're like uh man they're they're remembering all this this is not memory that that they'll never forget nope R- rug pulled from under you again they're actually stuck in kind of like a purgatorial hellhole mm-hmm. in krampus's wide collection of you know little globes little christmas globes and i mean that's i mean that's just classic upon classic upon classic ending right there and it works incredibly well i think uh would you agree it seems you would by the nodding. Yes. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm a man of few words. Like, we, unless, we, um, unless it's unless horrible it's gumbo, sentences. Gumbo soup. Bring in the gumbo I have, soup. I have a lot to say about gumbo soup. 
Uh, yeah, this film was directed by Michael Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy. I don't really know how to pronounce his name. It's misspelled. It's spelled in a weird Dor- way. Do yeah, whatever. Uh, anyway, he's a guy that that directed one of my favorite anthology horror movies, and that's Trick or Treat. And apparently, he's he's directed a few shorts, of Trick or Treat, Father's Day, Trick or Treat, etc. But he's also directed. Uh, he's gonna direct a new Trick or Treat. Uh, and follow, uh, is it already out? I don't I think don't it's out, think right? So, no. Anyway, it's coming out. But uh, more notably, he's gonna—he's the guy that's been chosen to direct Godzilla: King of Monsters. Oh, that's interesting. Which I think is a very interesting choice, and uh, I, I, you know, I mean, really, really interested to see where he takes it because yeah. he, he really has his tongue firmly in cheek in a lot of his stuff. So I'm interested Man, to see where WB, he takes it. WB is really giving. A lot of horror directors, a lot of work. Yeah, I've noticed that late. DC's getting a lot of horror yeah. directors on there. You know, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to really see yeah. that these genre guys are getting bigger chances, bigger opportunities because it's good for the genre. And uh, let's let's wrap that up with this movie as a whole is good for the genre. I know we're getting a sequel to it. I don't know if he's. Oh, he, we are. Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah, also, I it's worth it's, it's worth to note. That when this movie came up, since the name Krampus is not yeah. copyrighted... There's like 10,000 Krampi films. There's a billion of movies entitled Krampus. So when you go and look for this movie, if you haven't seen it, make sure you get the... The uh, Krampus. The one from Universal Pictures, directed by Michael Dorothy. With Adam Scott. With Adam Scott. Because there's a million imitators, and they took advantage of the fact that they that they could call this yeah. thing Krampus. I'm sure all the other ones are crap. They uh, might. I mean, there might be some good there ones. Might be but, some good, uh, there's like eight trillion of them. So yeah. I'm sure there's one good one in there. You know, and even when they when they didn't go for the direct ripoffs, I mean, we can't really call them ripoffs because it's based on a. But they. I mean, it was um, obvious. It was a cash in. Yeah, it's uh, like when the Mummy came out and you saw American Mummy with the same font. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Come on, dude. So uh, there might be some good ones out there, but we haven't seen uh, one yet. But uh, yeah, man. I mean, this is this is the good one here, and it's amazing. Check it out. Pretty good. It's about as good as some gumbo soup. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, we're probably gonna see some movie based in New Orleans mm-hmm. because of the gumbo, gumbo soup, soup references. Well, we gotta see Preacher today. Oh, that's true. Huh? But uh, anyway, this has been Ahab and the Goon Tick. We're talking Krampus. Check it out. Tell us what you think. Are we right? Are we wrong? We complete idiots, most likely. Like, subscribe, share. Get your $10 slammer on. <laughs> if you got a good recipe for gumbo soup, make sure and let me know. Hit us up. <laughs>